number 137. It's so sweet. 137. Amen.
Well, we're to praise Him. One place He said, if these don't praise the Lord, the rock should cry out. <coughs> Thank God for the privilege we have to praise the Lord and uh, to be in church. I was proud to be in another old-fashioned Holy Ghost house filled <coughs> Preaching, praying, singing, shouting Sunday night. Amen. I was wanting to be in one more service like that. And Lord, let, Lord, let it happen. Praise God. Amen. I'm talking about that kind of preaching where <coughs> right back and preaching. Yep. Crying aloud, despair not. And uh, lift up your voice like a trumpet and preach. And sing it. I don't know if I ever heard the singing ring out any better than that did Sunday night. Right. Hard in my life, I don't guess. And so I thank God for letting us be in that type of service. Yes, we all need that every once in a while. Sure would be glad if it was a little closer together. It? It'd be good. Amen. Well, turn your Bible to Revelation. Uh, Brother Stanley, I thought Brother Stanley was going to preach tonight. Was, uh, the idea was that, you know, uh, I'd just preach when what nobody had preached. So if y'all want to hear me more, just pray. Won't be no preachers here. <laughs> I'll believe you'll pray that. Pray for the ones that are preaching. That's what. <laughs> but I, I want to read a little scripture in Revelation, and uh, as uh, Steve refers to it a lot of times, the red, right? And uh, these churches, and uh, I'm going to read first in uh, chapter three. And I think I'll, I'll probably read a little, just a few verses about three different churches here and talk to you uh, just a little while. And uh, Revelation chapter 3, and <clears throat> let's see, verse number 14. We'll read a few verses here, and talk a little, and maybe turn to another uh, church if you found the place. Uh, chapter 3, verse 14. To the angel of the church of the letter sin, write these things, saith Amen. The faithful and true witness is beginning of the creation of God. <clears throat> I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. Thou mayest be rich, white raiment, thou mayest be clothed. The shame of thy nakedness shall not appear. Anoint thine eyes with thy sight, that thou mayest see us. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, I for and repent. And I believe I'll just stop reading right there. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about this church. And uh, uh, the first thing, the first kind of church I want to talk about, a, a blinded church. Uh, a blinded church. Now, we need revival in these last days. We all know that. Amen. And the Bible said, where there's no vision, the people will perish. And uh, so many things can be said about that. Perilous times we're living in now. Dangerous times, dreadful times. And seem like a lot of folk is even blind to that. But it said one time, we'll found not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee. And the Lord wants us to rejoice in him. For he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven, and said, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. Blinded church. Let me say this. There's two kind of people that's blinded. The sinner's completely blind. The Bible said, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. 
So sinners, totally blind, spiritually speaking. And then sometimes say folk is blind. Bible said in Peter 1, they had their face seven pain. Verse 9 said, but he that lacketh these things is what? Blind. Right. Cannot see afar off. He's forgotten that he's once heard from his old sins. Can you imagine being saved and getting far enough from God you'd forget about being purged from your sins? Right. That's what the scripture said. I'm just saying what the Bible says about it. Amen. And so uh, sinners totally blind and some say folk is blind. This draw a little circle, get in it, and can't see out of the circle. Oh God, have mercy on us ever. That, that's the case with this church. And uh, I want to reread one verse here. Verse number 17. Because thou sayest I am rich, increased with goods, have need of nothing. That's the average Baptist, I reckon. And knowest not that are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That word is blind. So we find a blind church here. A lot of sin churches blind to the spiritual thing. Well, they thought they had everything they needed and they thought everything was just fine the way they saw themselves. But it's a different story the way the Lord saw it. He saw this blind. And oh, God help us. Sometimes we are blind in our self-condition. We feel like we're all right. We think we're all right. But the Bible said, uh, uh, I believe it's in uh, Little John, it said uh, for us to uh, uh, hold fast to the things that we have. And uh, not, uh, that's not the words, I can't remember right now, but not give up on what God's give us, but hold to it, be steadfast, and uh, not be blinded about uh, the way we are, self, blinded toward ourselves, the way we see ourselves. It's pretty easy to see ourselves that we're looking pretty good, but uh, it might not, that might not be the way the Lord sees us. And, uh, well, a lot of things we said about this, but I'm not going to take a lot of time about it, but uh, uh, James said, uh, be doers of the word, not here. If we're just hearers of the word, we're like a man that looked in the glass and saw himself and then he went his way and forgot what he looked like. And uh, so if we just hear the word and don't be doers of the word, then we're blind uh, the way we are. Our sin. No, one, no wonder David said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. May the Lord help us. We'd pray that prayer sometime. And sometimes we're blinded to, about the Savior's love. Let me say this before I go into that, though. I thought about Elijah one time, and uh, he, was over, he was in a battle. And uh, of course, he had a servant, and evidently this young man, but anyhow, that young man went out there and saw uh, the enemy all around, the woods and things full of uh, horses and chariots. And he came back and said, Alas, Master, what in the world are we going to do? The woods is full of horses and chariots and things out there. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open the eyes of the young man that he may see. And when the Lord opened his eyes, he saw, the, uh, he saw the mountains full of horses and chariots of fire. Yep. Now the first time he just saw the horses and chariots. That's the fleshly thing. That's the natural thing. Yep. But when the Lord touched him and opened his eyes, he saw chariots and horses of fire. That's a difference, thank God. Elijah said, look, open his eyes and let him see they're more on our side than they are on the other side. I want to remind you tonight, we may be a few in number, and uh, we may be outnumbered right now, but I tell you, we're going to come out a winner. Yes. We're going to win at the end, amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're blinded about the Savior's love. If we can just get a glimpse how much the Lord loved us. God commendeth His love toward us while we yet sinners. Christ died for us. In the year that King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord high and lifted. Oh, God help us. If we could just see the Lord high and lifted up as he is. I mean, really see him high and lifted up. And then we saw ourselves, got a glimpse of ourselves. 
we wouldn't look too good. That's right. Isaiah said, Wash me, I'm a man of unclean lips, and all the people around me, they're unclean. And, and the sheriff film got that live coal and touched his lips and said, uh, Your sins was purged. And then he said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who am I saying? Who will go for us? And he said, Lord, hear my. Lord, I'm ready to go. Yep. I'm ready to go to battle. And I'll tell you, if we'd see how much the Lord loved us, get a glimpse of his love, right. I believe he'd make us a different Christian to what we are most of the time. Behold, what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And then sometimes we're blinded to the sinner's destiny. Sinners is dying without God. We forget that almost sometimes. And we get blinded to the fact that Jesus said the harvest truly is plenteous and the labors are few. That's the reason he said pray the Lord of the harvest. If you run out of anything else to pray for, you can pray this prayer. And that's what the Lord said pray for. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he'd send forth labors into his harvest. And uh, so uh, we need to pray that prayer daily. I try to pray that prayer daily. The Lord will send forth laborers. We need laborers. You know what a real labor is? Somebody don't quit till he gets the job done. Labor does what he's told to do. He's not the boss, you know. He just does what somebody else tells him to do. Don't we need a bunch of them in our church that's willing, willing to labor for the Lord and try to reach the sinners who don't know God? Well, the Bible said, if I only knew the gift of God, that's John 4, when the, Jesus met that woman at Jacob's well, and they started talking about the water, but he said, if I knew the gift of God, who is he talking to? You'd ask him, he'd give you that living water. So sinners don't know many times, and it's our job to be a light before them, and a witness before them, and help them to come to the Lord. Well, let me read a little bit about this here. That's a blinded church. Let me, let me read a few verses over here. Let's see. I believe this is chapter 2, and and uh, verses, uh, uh, chapter 2 and verse 8, let's read. To the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things. Saith the first and the last, which was dead, is alive. I know thy works in tribulation, poverty, that thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they're Jews, and are not, but the synagogues of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, and you shall be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days, but be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. That was, that was a blinded church. This is a broken church. That's what we need in these last days. Oh, God, we need, we need the Lord to break our hearts. Used to sing a song a long time ago, and Something like this, I get mighty close to heaven through my tears. And I believe we could do that again. Amen. I just believe it'd work again. The Bible said this poor man cried, the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his trouble. And we need to be broken these last days. And uh, here's a church that was broken. Uh, preachers need to be broken. If you ever read over, I believe it's Joel, the Old Testament, it said, let the ministers weep between the porch and the altar. And I wonder how many times the preachers does that these days, weep between the porch and the altar. On the way in, amen. They need teachers that weep and, and uh, singers and prayer warriors and everybody that's broken. Jeremiah said, oh, that my head were watered, my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night. For the slain of the daughter of my people Israel. David said, All night long make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. And Paul said, what, By the space of three years and six months, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. But her tears, I think, is about dried up these days, most time. And uh, we don't, we're not broken like we ought to be. And, uh, but, hey, so that picture's broken. That light can't shine like it's supposed to shine. You know when I'm talking about the. You know where he said, take a lamp and, and put a, 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 light, a light in it and 
picture over that. And uh, so we've got to break that picture where that light shines. That picture is the top of our body, and we're our tabernacle. We're supposed to uh, break that. It's supposed to be broken. When when the Lord breaks us, I'll tell you, it's, sometimes it's rough when the Lord has to break us. But He can. Yep. Nehemiah, when he saw the walls of the city tore down and everything, it, it broke his heart what he saw. And uh, he got the men together and started working to build the wall and he got the job done because he's broken about it. The Bible said to draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you know, the mind be afflicted, weep and mourn, let your life to be turned to mourning, joy to heaven. They that sow in tears to reap in joy, that go forth bar, weep and bear and precious seeds, your doubt let's come begin to rejoice. Bring the sheaves with it. Weep and bear there for a night. But you know what the Bible said. Joy cometh in the morning. We had more weeping. I'm persuaded we'd have more joy in our hearts. In fact, I know we would. I just know we would. Hezekiah wept sore. The Lord had mercy on him. Let me read about another church. I tell you, I won't talk too long. I won't. This is chapter three and verse. Let me see verse. Uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just read verse 9. I won't read it all. But this is the church at uh, Philadelphia. Verse 9, we'll read verse 9, 2 or 3 verse. Behold, behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan, which say they're Jews or not. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before the feet and to know that I've loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from our temptation, which shall come all, on all the world to try them dwell on the face of the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that face that thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And I believe we find a busy church right here. And don't you think that's what we need? A busy church. Wake thou that sleepest, the Bible said, rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. It's high time to wake out of sleep, for now's our salvation nearer. And when we believe, the night's far spent, the days at hand. And the nights are speaking, and the plants and things like that, and the factories, and if they got a deadline to meet, they just uh, work overtime and do everything that's needed and let other things go to try to meet that deadline. We just about got a deadline to meet. I believe the Lord's soon coming. Don't believe it'd be long. Don't believe we'll have long to work. And uh, so we ought to be trying to do something special for the Lord in these last days. I think if we're going to get it done, we're going to have to start soon. Right. And uh, you say, what are they do? How they more do than we'll ever get done. So don't worry about what it is, just get to it. And get busy, get doing it. And uh, them, uh, sometimes you can do something alone. I mean, just you and God. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need somebody else to help you. And Sometimes it takes three or four, but whatever it takes, God in heaven knows what we need. That man that uh, you know they brought to Jesus, he's born of four, and uh, took all four of them to carry a corner piece. I figure that's the way they carried the bed, and uh, to get him to Jesus, and get him their own time, get him there like he's supposed to get, get there. And uh, so may the Lord help us to work together. We're laborers. We are laborers together with God. Amen. And... Uh, Sometimes we are real busy for ourselves and uh, don't take enough time to be busy for the Lord. May the Lord help us. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for letting us come to prayer meeting tonight and sing, pray, and, and uh, preach a little bit. Thank you for the Word of God. And I know it's forever settled in heaven. We can always stand on the Word of God and we lean on the promises of God lean on the everlasting arm. And I just thank you so much, Lord, that you've let a few of us come to church tonight and enjoy a time of fellowship and uh, get ready for the meeting this weekend. I just pray if you'd let us live to come back here Sunday morning, Sunday night, the Holy Ghost would be right in our midst in the middle of everything we do. Oh, God, let the fire of God rain down from heaven. Let it rain down beneath the fire of God in our midst when we meet.
to worship you, Lord. Bless every family here. Bless every individual. All these requests are mentioned at the first of the service and sick and sinners and whoever it may be. Oh God, would you please touch them and help them. If they need a healing, you'll heal them. If they need a saving, you'll save them. They need to get their heart right with God. They'll get right. And I just pray, Lord, you'd help us to stay busy in these last days. Continue to bless this church and help us stay true to your word and faithful. And we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, stand up, boy.